is a bird brain and today I will introduce you to the color selector node. So for those of you who've been using Harmony for a little while, I bet you've already tried to use the legendary color override node in order to isolate and work with some colors in particular. And then you opened it and you were like, what the heck? <laughs> because there's so many things to look at, there's so many parameters, and you open the node only to close it because it's a bit scary. <laughs> and I admit, it's rather a bulky node for a first timer, but it's very useful and we'll get to it in another video. So the color override node is a very powerful node, but most of the time people just want to use it to render their selected colors only. So after a few years, the R&D team at Toon Boom, they figured out that people would use the color override only for this little feature and that node is a bit complicated to get only that little feature uh, to be used. So what they did is they took this little section of the color override and they created a little tiny baby node called the color selector, which is basically just this little section of uh, the color override. So let me just show you. It's very, very clean, very simple, and all you can do is add and remove colors. So let's get to it. First, just drop it in your scene and then be sure to connect it to an element because if you don't, you won't get any colors to pick from. So if you connect your character to your color selector, then you'll get many colors to choose from. So the top ones are all the palettes in your scene and the bottom palette is the one that is used in the current element. So then if you want to pick some of these colors, uh, like the body color, for example, from this point on, the only color that will be showing is the body color. So let me just show you with the display here. So if you add more colors to it, you'll get more and more colors. Now, however, just like the color art layer, the color selector do not take your pencil lines into account. So you have to be careful when you use it and always snug it right between your line art and your color art. Because if you don't and you put it on top, it will eat away your line art, just like we saw in the auto patch video. So be sure to just snug it in between your line art and your color art and you'll be just fine. So now, as always, I won't just show you the node without using it. I'm going to show you a very easy way to bonify your animation with it. So for those of you who've been following the channel for a while now, it's no secret that I'm quite a lazy artist and that I'm always searching for ways to make things quicker and simpler. I guess this is yet another reason why I just love Harmony so much. It allows me to cheat my way out of everything so easily. So today I will teach you a very easy trick using the color selector node that will allow you to sprinkle a little bit of rigging magic into your paperless animation to effortlessly spice it up. One of the biggest drawbacks with paperless animation is how time-consuming the cleanup process is, especially if you compare it to cutout where you can reuse the same piece over and over again. In a rig, it's easy to cut smarter details on bigger shapes like irises on eye whites because you have access to many different little layers and each layer can have access to the line art and color art sub-layers. So to cut an iris onto an eye white is very easy. But try to do that on paperless animation. It's a bit harder because all you have if you go into your layer is line art and the whole colors. So how can you cut detail in to a color. What is easy with the color selector? All you have to do, connect it to your character. Here I have my color selector that is only allowing my eye white color to pass. And then what I'm gonna do is use it to cut both of my irises. So this is Sam, it's my little seahorse character. It's a frame by frame animation. So he has very detailed irises. But it's fine because I only cleaned them once and then I moved them around using the pegs. Boop, boop, boop. So I had I add my irises, I put a cutter on it, I snugged that little cutter in between my line art and my color art. And then all I have to do now is take the color selector and connect it to my cutter allowing my irises to show up only on my eye white color. So you can use the color selector cut method to cut irises into eye whites, uh, details into t-shirts, but you can also use it to cut some textures. So I had a little texture here ready that I just copy pasted from Google. I have my color selector. I'm gonna connect it to my body. And inside there, I'm gonna go get the color of the body, then connect it to my cutter and take this and snug it between my line art and my color art, just like I did for the iris. And then I'll have a texture appear, but only on my color. Because if I look at my color selector in this display, all I have is the body color, allowing me to cut it very easily with this little texture. So if I go to render view, I have a little scale texture to my character. And by the way, you can even add some freeform deformer to this texture and you can then move it around to make it fit your animation, which is quite cool. Well, I think it's cool. Anyway, this is for another video. So I hope you enjoy learning a bit more about the color selector node and all you can do with it. 
and I cannot wait to see what you come up with in your own projects. So have a nice day and see you next week!